After I graduated college, I uh, became a missionary in Central America. And even though I, I had graduated, um, I'll say this, I had a degree in theology. I was a Catholic missionary. I was working at a Catholic mission. I was going to mass every single day and I hated the Catholic church. There's a lot of reasons for that, but um, the main reason is my own pride. And at one point, there were these two priests down there and they were so good, they were so holy, but I would make fun of them every time they got up to preach. Every time they said anything, I would just like roll my eyes, I'd scoff at them, I'd be behind their backs, be talking about them, as well as other things, right? And at one point, after being down there for maybe a couple months, I got really sick. And at one point, um, I, I know I shared this before, but at one point, uh, the priest, who the younger priest, he had this massively long day. Every single day, he just poured himself out. And he knew I, that I was a jerk to him. I mean, it wasn't like he didn't notice this. It was like maybe 7.45 p.m. He'd been going all day and he was tra going across a little dirt alleyway between the church and the rectory to get some rice and beans. And someone ran up to him and said, Father Tony, uh, Mike's really sick. And so Father Tony, this man who knew I did not treat him well, he ran into the church, he grabbed the Holy Communion, got the Holy Oils and ran over to where I was. And there, I thought, I mean, I remember being delirious. I remember not really, I knew what I was doing. I knew, I was like, wow, Father Tony's here. That's crazy. That's really nice of him because I've been treating him like a jerk. But here he is giving me the sacraments. And Father Tony, he said, do you want to go to confession? And I think about this. At that moment, I remember thinking like, this is potentially my deathbed. This is potentially the place where I'm going to die. And he offered me to go to confession, the chance to receive God's mercy. And I was like, oh, I'm good. I'll take the other two things. So you can give me anointing. You can give me Holy Communion. Now, thankfully, thankfully, I just praise the Lord that I got better <laughs> and, uh, and then had a conversion after that. I think God's grace just was ma massively, massively uh, important. Mercy, but here's the thing. Mercy was offered, but mercy wasn't accepted. I remember years later, I was ordained and I was meeting with my spiritual director. He's a hermit way up north in northern Minnesota. And I told him the story and it wasn't until a couple years later that he brought it back up again. And he said, can I tell you something? I was like, sure. He's like, he said, when you told me that story about when you were in Central America and you got sick and the priest came to your bedside and he offered you to go to confession and you said no, he said, my blood ran cold. I'm like, really? He said, well, yeah. Because I know that if you would have died in that moment, you would have been lost to God forever. And I didn't realize. I, did, I literally did not realize but that's exactly what I was doing here. And you know, I, whenever I tell that story, people are like, oh, no, no, Father, but you, know, you can't be sure. Like, you know, God understands. Like, God is so merciful. And now I'm realizing, yeah, you're right. I don't know for sure. And yes, God is merciful, but also he is so merciful that he sent me a priest. <laughs> like, on when I thought I was dying, he actually sent a priest to my bedside. And yes, God is merciful because he didn't let me die. And so I know God's merciful. But I also know that forgiveness was offered and forgiveness was rejected. You know, in a side note here, in, in James chapter 3, James writes this, he says, Not many of you should be teachers, my brethren. For if you're a teacher, you'll be liable to a greater judgment. I have to say that that's one of the reasons why I have a, uh, I have kind of no patience for Catholic schools that aren't really Catholic. Like that, that for, for Catholic schools that, that aren't really interested in teaching the truth. I showed up to campus like on fire for my faith. I wanted to follow Jesus. I wanted to know why I believed what I believed. And after four years, My faith was broken. And I get, to have, I get to take responsibility for that myself, right? I get to say, like, with my own pride, yep, yep, there are people who made it through who didn't have their faith shaken like mine was. But at the same time, James was right. Not many of you should be teachers, my brethren, because you'll be liable to a greater judgment. But on my deathbed, I didn't fear God. The good thief, looking at the other, he asked that question, do you not fear God? And I just have to, I beg all of us as you're here, please do not consider yourself above fear of the Lord because it has sobered up more people than we like to think. What so often can begin with fear is spoken in love, is spoken in hope and can end in love. The good thief, he be, what began with fear, he spoke in love he spoke in hope and he died in love. And this is so critical for every single one of us.